you from this exhibition of the CSIR and uh, this together with the Department of Science and Technology showcasing the readiness of South Africa to tackle the fourth industrial revolution. Um, I don't know, are we in the fourth industrial revolution? Are we heading into the fourth industrial revolution? Well, hopefully we can get a little bit of clarity because now I've got the minister with us, the Minister of Science and Technology, uh, Mamaloko Kubai Ngubane. So good to have you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lee and good morning to the viewers at home. So, so answer me, my, my delving question. Are we in the fourth industrial revolution or is it still coming? That, I suppose, is the main question. No, we are already here because part of a lot of work that that is within the fourth IR is already being implemented. We do have quite elements around blockchain work that is being done, around 3D printing. You'd have seen the 3D printing. I was told, Lian, that a 3D printing that we have in CSR is the biggest and can produce a human being so wow. we haven't tested that please don't <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible. Uh, it's a lot of um, obviously titanium, titanium powders. We do have the um, big data center that we have. You've seen it when we were in Canovan. That's the biggest in the world. So those are the elements of 4IR. You'd have seen quite a number of people. One of the exhibitors here is showing how they use blockchain to protect a piracy of movies. I mean, that's what can be done around uh, 4IR. So we are already doing elements of 4IR. There are others that we are still building and obviously other things will respond. One of the things I say, people will say, but there are no regulations, there are no policies, you don't allow technology, you, you don't constrain technologies by putting all the other things, allow technology to erupt, then you can come and figure yourself out later. Yes. Yes. So for IR is happening, we'll figure ourselves. We'll figure it all out. But I mean, you know, from what I'm seeing here, it's quite incredible, but I always get amazed when I visit the CSIR. I suppose I owe you a big congratulations as well. You've just got a major feather in your cap being appointed on the World Economic Forum's new multi-stakeholder global artificial intelligence council. I had to read that because um, it, I find it difficult to understand what it is, never mind to carry that title. What is it that you're going to be doing? Because, I mean, from what I understand, to sit on a global council for artificial intelligence, this is massive. No, definitely. We, we're really excited. Um, Leanne, it's, it, it comes at the right moment for South Africa. Being recognized, I mean, I learned later, um, January, that actually there were countries that were bidding to be. We didn't even have to bid. We were invited to be part of the World Economic Forum Global Council on Intel Artificial Intelligence. And I guess it's the work that we've been doing in terms of advocating for technology advancement, the work that we've been doing in the portfolio, but even in global platforms where we speak about a number of areas that we've been able to. What will be happening there is that as members of the council, we'll be looking at the governance model around artificial intelligence, machine learning across the globe, um, maybe advise and provide some guiding principles in what can be done. And part of the issues is because some of the many of us as countries are battling around how do we do regulations, how do we gov do governance issues around fourth industrial revolution. So part of what the council will be looking at, are we able to provide a framework of, of uh, governance? We are sitting there, three politicians, myself, um, Prime Minister Theresa May and the Minister of Canada in Science and Technology. And then we have other special, um, what, what we call technical experts. Um, what, the chairman of, of the council is a person who has written a book, um, former Microsoft uh, CEO in China, who's written a book about artificial intelligence and the superpowers and what, needs, what, what is the future looking like and what will be the game changer going forward. So it's quite highly technical. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm quite humbled because we look at the profile of the people who are sitting in that council um, and you see these are experts who have done more work um, in terms of the 4IR. But what it gives us as South Africa is an opportunity to be first hand in receiving information and knowing what is being done because we'll have access to all the information about what is happening in any other country. So when we meet, because we meet through um, video conferencing and 
and we also we have one meeting annually uh, and then we'll have video conferences so through that and we have technical people who will be supporting us as experts into that so when they bring together those reports I, I think it will be one of the valuable things as South Africa to be able to see where we are standing as a country and how other countries are doing. Yeah it's it's absolutely a huge accolade but just finally as we wrap up and, and very quickly how, do, how does the average South African prepare for this because I look around here and obviously everyone is preparing I mean this we're standing next to a machine that counts tablets we've got an ATM which is a pharmacy dispensing unit it's absolutely incredible I mean there are all these things around us but as the average South African you know it needs to touch our lives even more and make it much easier that's the idea of the forced industrial revolution but how do we get involved what do we do I think we start with firstly I would want to encourage young girls and, and boys in schools to uptake maths and science in their education I think it starts there at the foundation level where in terms of education and I was very excited and when I listened to the president when he delivered his state of the nation address because he put the children in the center of this technology and the technical schools that he was talking about. That's part of us preparing for the society to be ready because these are the leaders of the future. These are the future um, industry captains who would have to be ready for this. Um, secondly, it's about us engaging and finding information. Obviously, because we're going to have to learn from a point of information sharing, we'll do our best as government to engage because we'll find other people are saying this technology is going to take our jobs, this technology is going to do that. And we're saying, let's look at it differently. When ATMs came, people were scared that ATMs were going to take the jobs. Actually, when that automation happened in the banking system, it increased the number of branches that we had. So it created more jobs. So it's how you redefine the works, how you redefine the job profile going forward. So I think part of what we need to do from either you are a worker in a working environment, engage with your employers and ask, are they planning fourth industrial revolution and how does it impact? How can we upskill yourself to be ready for that that's one because it shouldn't be about government preparing people only it's about us from a work point of view being able to prepare ourselves secondly it's about I'm excited Leanne, because I'm a working mother and I know there's artificial robotic chefs you know if that can be taken away from me <laughs> as a mother at home having not to prepare dinner and then I can focus on my work you know oh, so it's it's got it's got its positive ways yeah. so I always say look at the most positive and the, yes, we'll pay attention to the negative, but there's things that are going to help us. That's yeah. why I'm making an example as a mother uh, that a, a, a robotic cooking for me, I just press from home from a cell phone to say, prepare a pasta and this, and then it prepares. When we get home, all of us, it just dishes. Exactly. And maybe we could have my time to rest. And we could create a, a very handsome chef in our kitchen on that 3D machine. <laughs> we'll print him out, we'll leave him in the kitchen, and he can do all the cooking for us. Nice idea. I like it, Minister. <laughs> Thank you you so much. We can dream it and the reality is it'll come true. Our Minister of Science and Technology talking to us here about the fourth industrial revolution and what a pleasure it has been. Uh, Mamaloko Kubai and Gobane. Now the President is going to be coming and visiting and having a look at where we are uh, in terms of uh, our, our stance on this uh, revolution that is taking over but not our jobs. It's enhancing it and that's what I'm learning here today. All right, Ve, I'll hand it over to you.